Well, hello there! I'm the Cozy Platypus. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing well, and if not, I have just a thing to cheer you up because today we are building in The Sims. I have recently finished my playthrough of the Not So Berry Challenge. I know a lot of people have been doing that challenge specifically, and I had a blast doing it, but I was looking for something new to take its place, and I came across a legacy challenge called the Solar System Legacy. Each generation is based off of a planet in the solar system. And then I think it also includes the sun, the moon, I think maybe Pluto, enough to make it an actual even 10 generations for this legacy. So I have just barely started the Mercury generation. Well, I guess I'm about halfway through it. I decided that they needed a house. My Sim just recently got married. They started having kids. A lot of the Mercury generation from this challenge has to do with being a parent and uh, completing a lot of those family focused goals and aspirations. So we got moving quick on the family and they've been living in a four rent apartment lot so they don't own a house yet and it's just getting really annoying to have to deal with the four rent bugs. They're just nearly unplayable and I just couldn't handle it anymore. So I decided I wanted to build and I wanted to film it uh, because building is fun and I enjoy watching these so I figured why not. As you can see right now I am going through the floor plan for this build. Um, I don't come up with these from my own head, full disclosure, because I, I wouldn't be able to. Honestly, the biggest lie in any creative pursuit is that you have to come up with it from scratch. I am a writer, I've been writing stories since I was like seven, and I literally have a book called art is theft because genuinely any type of art that you're doing is a mashup of things that you've seen before. So when I'm building in The Sims, I for sure do not just come up with it out of my head. I think that if you had been doing it for a really long time, it'd be a little bit easier to come up with an idea, but, but in the past, I really just like to download shells from the gallery and when I started getting into building my own from scratch I really enjoy it but I really only enjoy it if I can work off of a blueprint so I have a whole Pinterest board full of literal house blueprints they have pictures of the outside of what the build kind of looks like and then floor plans and I base at least the beginning part of my builds off of the floor plans that I find on Pinterest. I think if you just get on Pinterest or even Google and if you search house floor plans or blueprints or something like that, you will find some options that will come up that will give you a great place to start when you're trying to build something from scratch. So I got the layout figured out, the color schemes, and I don't think the cabinets stay either are final, but I was just trying to map out where things would be. I have my Sims using laundry in this save, so I had to put a laundry room in for them and just get all of the clutter because the laundry day pack clutter is just fantastic. I love it. As you can see, I jump around a lot when I'm building. I tend to get a bit tired of looking at one place and I have to look at something else and then come back and I can see it a little bit clearer after that point. But I'm just, I was messing with the floor plan, trying to get the stairs to work and they wouldn't. So I just decided to put a bathroom at the top of the stairs because I could not get it to actually delete the ceiling, but we're working on the living room now. I kind of like small living rooms. I, I oftentimes have a hard time figuring out the layout of living rooms because I tend to have them in a space that is mostly open floor plans and it just makes it hard to figure out where to put the furniture, where to put the TV and all of the you know odds and ends that are typically in the living room so it was nice in this build to have it kind of closed off and separated and it just made the layout a lot easier and more space for uh, seating and now we are moving to the office as you can see i'm taking a chance i love the book nook kit i have to say it's beautiful but the shelves are so buggy they almost always just disappear half the time when you load into the lot. So I'm putting them here because I thought they looked nice with this little library wall and we're just gonna hope for the best. But anyway, I moved up to the main bedroom and uh, started decorating that. As you can see, I love windows. I'm also going with a kind of grayscale theme for this generation. There's not an explicit 
color rule for this legacy challenge but i do like to have at least somewhat of a theme um, it just kind of helps it be cohesive and gives me a bit of a direction to go in um, so yeah i usually use a ton of cc but for this build i did it in not base game, but um, packs from the game so that I could put it on the gallery and you guys could download it if you wanted to. For my legacy challenge, I'm definitely going to have to basically gut the house and start over on the furnishings because my Sims for sure cannot afford this yet. So I've been watching, I think her name is Kelsey Dangerous here on YouTube do her not so very challenge she's in blue generation she's at the very end and her sims moved into a house that was mostly empty with a lot of boxes and she's kind of gone along in the storyline and has added more to the house as time has gone on and i really love that idea so i will definitely be doing it with this house my current legacy family uh they only have one kid and she is currently pregnant so this is more space than they need right now, but I thought it could start mostly empty and we could just build it as time goes on. And now I am doing the entryway. I love to put a lot of clutter in the entryway, a mirror, a nice rug, an entry table, all of those fun things. A lot of the clutter items often look really nice in the entryway. I have to admit, I have an obsession with rugs and plants, both. My favorite flooring is probably the one from jungle adventure that i'm using here and i use it a lot but um, because it's you know hardwood i do like to add a bunch of rugs so that it feels cozy and lived in and i also just feel like plants make everything better i have nothing else to say but i believe that i am right you might be able to see it in there somewhere i have a little tiny pantry that I ended up putting the the KitchenAid mixing bowl and a couple other of those appliances so they were out, off of the main counters. And I'm getting ready to start working on the nursery, the current nursery. I typically with families that I know that I'm going to have a lot of kids, I probably will have maybe five kids or so, like a lot of kids with a lot more kids than I usually uh, like to have in the sims in one family for this generation just because of the aspirations and kind of character that um, the mercury generation has become so when i have a lot of kids and i know that they're all going to be at different ages i like to have rooms that are designated for each life stage not necessarily for each kid so at least at first until they're all like children and they can just have regular beds i will probably end up leaving this room as the baby room and the other room that i will be building here in a little bit as the toddler room and then once they start having another kid one ages up to a toddler and i'll move them into the toddler room the next one can be in the baby room and then we will start building out and having uh, rooms for the children and teens once they get older and then once they're all of a similar age then i will personalize them more especially like teen years i will personalize them more to each child but at the moment we have two sons uh we have one son that is born and she is pregnant with another boy so for now these rooms reflect that and then the other couple rooms that i have upstairs i just put a couple boxes in them for that like storyline purposes that i was i mentioned earlier so if you guys want to download this build then you have a couple extra rooms to do whatever you want with and there's also a garage off to the side here that you can use for whatever skill building items you want to put in depending on what your sim is working on also you have got to have a debug car if you're gonna have a garage i haven't decided yet if i'm going to record any of my gameplay for this legacy challenge so if you're interested in that please comment down below and let me know and i would be happy to bring you in to uh the mercury generation i've been referring to them as the Benar family, which is a tie into the um, world that I created for my current novel that I'm in the process of self-publishing. Benar is the name of the solar system. It's the Benar system instead of the solar system that I created for my novel. 
so i thought that would be a cute little tie-in because it is a solar system challenge that it kind of fit anyway if you are interested in watching me play through this challenge or want to know more about it please comment and let me know and i will definitely consider it if you guys are interested now as you can see i'm working on the landscaping and some of the exterior design i built this on the 50 by 40 lot in del sol valley I thought that this world worked well for the story building that I'm doing for this family. If you've ever seen that lot, you know that there's multiple little spots. It's it's an empty lot, but it has trees and some weeds and stuff on the lot already. And I originally started off with a plan to keep the landscaping elements that were already on the lot there but when I started building I realized my house got too big it happens frequently I intend to get carried away and then regret it because I have too much space but I did keep those trees and rocks and such and just moved them on the lot so I tried to keep that as kind of the theme that I was using for the landscaping of this house and I really do like to layer uh, landscaping this is a little bit more structured because it's more of an urban location but I like to layer low-lying plants with like flowering bushes together and I think it turns out really nice when you do it that way and now we're doing the balcony I really like how this turned out it's simple but it has a little fire pit and uh, the little flowers I thought were just really nice I've also as you can see been enjoying the backyard stuff kit I think that was just recently free the birdhouse and everything is always so cute and then I wanted to have a little outdoor seating area downstairs next to the kitchen so they could you know barbecue eat outside all of that fun stuff and now I'm back to decorating. I do like to work on getting the furniture in place and kind of the general vibe figured out and then go back and add clutter. If I try to just do it all at once and stay in one spot, I end up uh, getting bored and not really building it out to the extent that I would like to. So I do like to move around a lot, but I like to add a lot of clutter in the kitchen and pathways in the backyard. The windier, the better. Having patches of trees and stuff are just always really nice. I really like having that. This is a big lot, so I was having a hard time trying to figure out how to fill it. But I thought, you know, with the windier the path, the more space it takes up. And then if you add some trees and stuff that match the landscape around it. But you put that all together and I think it came together pretty well. And now I'm just finishing up the last few touches. And now we're gonna switch over to live mode so that I can give you a tour. Okay, so please ignore the UI up here. I don't know what's going on. I broke or something because of a mod, but uh, I can still look at the house. So we're just gonna do that and I will look at that later. So here we have our house. I'm pretty happy with the way that the exterior turned out. It was a bit tricky trying to figure out like what to do with these sections for a single house. So um, I'm pretty happy with the way that this worked with the hedges. I think it ties it together really well. And then this is the edge of the lot and I have a path that just kind of comes up from this into the garage. Does it make a lot of sense? No, but it's the best we can do in The Sims. So when you first come into the front door, we have a little entryway here. And on this side, we have the laundry room. I stacked these so that I could put a little sink in here and a food bowl and a pretend water bowl for their dog. And then on this side, we have the office. Uh, I put a computer here. I'll probably bring their current computer over with them when I move them in. And a cork board, some plants. Just kept it pretty simple. A little reading corner with their giant wall of books here. And then over here, we've got just a regular bathroom. And then if you come down this hall, we have the kitchen. Yeah, I, the black and white theme turned out really well. I really like having two-toned cabinets. I think it just looks really nice and... Uh, different. I will definitely be trading all of these appliances out for the ones that my Sims have currently and just trading those to save a little bit of money. And then if you flip around this direction, we have the dining room and a little bar with a cow plant, of course. And then over here is the living room. We have a TV and then a little bear chair for their kids. Fireplace, 
this wall decor with some spots for some family pictures. Uh, the furniture and everything is very like light colored in this room so I like the idea of offsetting that with really dark dramatic wall color. And then back here we have a little like mud room with dog toys, dog bed. Right up the stairs it leads into this playroom that has some activity tables, a game table and stuff that will be really helpful for skill building and uh, parties and stuff for the kids. And then this room just has some boxes in it as if it's an empty room that is in the process of being moved in. This one does too. And I thought if you guys wanted to download this build that you could you know, decorate these however you want it. And then we have these little like open spaces down below. Over here we have the main family bathroom and we've got laundry baskets everywhere because we're doing laundry and it just makes it easier. If you haven't noticed, I am obsessed with this shelf. Every single bathroom in this house has that shelf above the toilet because I can't help myself. I don't know what to say. I it makes it into like every single one of the bathrooms that I make because it's just perfect and there's nothing else to say about it. So if you come around these stairs and down this hall, we've got a bathroom on both sides. Is that an excessive amount of bathrooms? Probably. And then the toddler room here. I really love this bed from Eco Lifestyle. I think it's so cute. I love the little canopy and all the little details and some more Eco Lifestyle stuff. I kept it pretty simple in here and of course you gotta have these toddler toys. I put them in every single toddler bedroom because they are one of the best for building the thinking skill once you have level two and then over here right next to it we have the baby's room i layered some of these wall decals on to make it look like a forest because of this wallpaper it just kind of fit really well i took the night light that protects against nightmares and sized it down so it makes it look like it's a little night light and then we just have some clutter i love to put a shelf of some kind above the changing table with some like extra diapers and stuff and then here is the master bedroom. I fit a couple different dressers together to make it look a little bit more built out. I have to have a standing mirror in every master bedroom because you gotta have a mirror, okay? It's a necessary part of any good room. Because my sim is in her third trimester, I did put a bassinet over here. As she gains more children and has more babies, this is just going to sit here to make it a little bit easier. And then they have their own bathroom over here, same situation. Out here we have a little sitting area with this like fire pit thing. So I thought this area turned out really nice. And yeah, that's it for the interior. Outside they have a bunch of stuff for kids. They have the hopscotch, the swings, a back porch here with a barbecue and a pizza oven. And then of course we have to have a shark pond in the back because just in case we need to nick somebody. Um, but anyway, I do like to keep a lot of the stuff that you might need for any type of party type um, on my lot just to make it a little bit easier for future parties. I did use this from high school years. It's the ladder. And so at some point I will probably turn this upstairs room into a teen room and put one of the high school years windows here so that they can like sneak out. But yeah, this is the build. I hope you like it. My handle on the gallery is the Cozy Platypus, which I will spell out in the description box so that you can find it if you want to download it. And if you are interested in watching me play through this legacy challenge, please let me know down below. All right, well, thank you for hanging out with me today. I had a blast and I hope you did as well. Right now we're playing The Sims 4 as well as some Stardew Valley if you'd like to check that out. But I plan to start incorporating even more cozy games soon, so please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. But until then, I hope you have an awesome day.